Here we have a brand new alternator. It's a PowerMaster 140 amp unit and it's overcharging. So the volts are anywhere between 14 and 18 volts. That's not ideal, it should be a nice steady 13.7 or thereabouts volts. So we'll take a look at seeing how we can fix that. So I could do this under warranty or buy a replacement, but being in a different country, it's gonna cost a lot with shipping and everything. So what we're gonna do is see if we can fix this uh, for a lot less than that. And a new voltage regulator is about 10 pounds or $15. I also happen to have the old alternator. The only reason I changed it was because the bearing uh, was squeaky in it and I wanted a higher output unit. So we're gonna see if we can take that voltage regulator out and swap it over. So let's take a look. The voltage regulator is actually there and of course you have to take this all apart to get to it. So what we're going to do in this video is take this apart, take the other one apart and then place the voltage regulator in there. The main thing I'm curious about is that was hooked up as a three wire whereas this can be run as a one wire or a three wire. So this is effectively a self-exciting um, alternator. What that means, it just has one wire and that's the output and when the engine turns on it spins the alternator, creates an electric field which is sensed and that turns the alternator on and outputs power. So that's what a self-exciting one wire unit does. Whereas traditionally um, they have an on-off switch and a voltage sensing wire. So what that means is through the dash there's a light that comes on when you turn the ignition on and that acts as an on-off switch and the voltage sensing wire uh, runs to the main loom and that looks at the draw of the system. So the if you've got headlights on, radio, uh, it's going to have a different draw than if you've got nothing running. So what that means is that this can output a uh, more accurate voltage to kind of compensate to give the system a steady voltage regardless of draw. So that's why three wires are recommended. Uh, one wire, they've been around for quite a while and especially the high output units, they seem to be pretty good. So that should be okay, but that's why it's recommended to run a three wire. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, main thing is to see if we can get it running. So what we'll do is we'll put that voltage regulator in here and see if it makes a difference, if it gives us the correct voltage reading and that's this video so let's see if we can fix it. So this is a 12 SI and this is a 12 SI as well I believe and um, I've already taken this one apart. This one was fine but the um, the bearing was noisy on it so um, I've taken the voltage regulator out and so it's just this uh, thing here. I don't know if this is self-exciting or if it requires um, to be plugged in uh, to these two terminals, so we'll find out. This one is self-exciting. So all I'm doing right now is taking out the um, uh, three screws. This was a bit difficult to get to um, because you don't have direct access uh, downwards. Um, and you, you actually have to undo these three and then take the uh, these, this magnet section out, but I wanted to try and cause minimal disruption, so just use the spanner, these are quarter inch, so um, these are pretty much out now, and um, we should just be able to swap them over, so just while this is a slight fiddly part to get to, I might just stop this video and come back uh, with the next part. We have the voltage regulator out, so this is the one from the PowerMaster. If you need a part number, it's D689. They're used in many types of alternators, and that is the self-exciting one, the D689. The ones I found, they were the D680. That's the non-self-exciting. A non-self-exciting will uh, charge. You just have to get some RPM going. We'll find that out if that's the case, but it's usually anywhere between 1000 and 1500 RPM. So there we go. Um, so I'm going to swap these over. I'm going to clean this up first. Here we are cleaned up. So just a bit of soap, water on a, a towel and uh, just gave it a quick clean. I looked up the uh, model number. I can't find anything on any of these. That's UNI0512 and YR-814S. No results whatsoever in uh, Google for those. So on reassembly, you might find an issue 
where you have these two brushes here and they have springs behind them so along here inside this plastic case which means that these brushes are kind of sat out here and it makes reassembly yeah, pretty much impossible. So you can see what the trick is here already. Take a paper clip, unfold it, um, push the back one in first, hold it in. You might need to use a screwdriver uh, because it has to go further than where you can push it with your finger. And then just through the back here, you have this access hole. And then that holds that one in place. And then uh, you move the next one in place. And I might need to push this further back out. Uh, and then obviously when this is in place, you can see the uh, wear marks there where those two brushes are in contact with the shaft. Obviously they'll rest against that and then you can pull this out and you're good to go. So there you go, there's our um, new old uh, voltage regulator. So we'll put this in the car and see if it makes any difference. The alternator is back in. So this is the Powermaster one with the uh, voltage regulator swapped over. And I'm leaving this unplugged because this has the um, exciter wire and the voltage um, sensor on it. So um, I think maybe there could have been an issue with one of these um, and that may have caused the voltage regulator to blow. So, uh, we'll, you know, we, we don't need these just yet. If this gets to, um, possibly it might um, start charging straight away or we might need to get 1,000, 1,500 RPM in there to get it going. Um, so all we have is the power connected at the back and um, we'll give that a try and see how that works. So uh, ignore the coolant leak, I've just changed the line out. So that uh, that's just come from when the line came out. So we'll go ahead and give that a try. So it looks like changing the voltage regulator worked. As you can see, we're at idle and we've got a nice 14 volts here. So, as you can see, it's staying at 14. It's not wavering up and down like it used to. Um, and it looks like the exciter kicked in as soon as the engine started. So I didn't actually need to rev it above a thousand RPM or anything to get the alternator kicked in. Uh, looks like the self-exciting part of the regulator works. Something to add is the choke was on when I started the engine. So the RPMs went up to about 800 RPM. When I turned the engine off and restarted it, it was still warm, so the choke was off, and it started up at about 600 RPM, and the alternator didn't start charging at that level. So it does need some RPM above idle to start, so that's obviously where the three-wire would come into effect, because that would start the alternator as soon as the engine started, regardless of RPM. So because it's set up as a one-wire, it will need it seems seven or eight hundred rpm so i'm not too worried about that it's easy enough to blip the throttle most of the time the choke will be on and most of the time you're going to reach that driving anyway it would be more of a concern if it was higher if it say needed you know 1500 rpm so i hope that helps someone fix an alternator for cheap and hopefully anyone that needs to change an altered regulator you can see how easy it is and I hope that helps someone. So thanks for watching. If it's helpful, uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks.